Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kept Tech here bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Sunday. And today I want to go over tips and tricks for desktop support, IT support, help desk. So if you're level one and if you have access to do this, then obviously you go ahead and do it. If not, then don't do it. You know, so I'm going to show you things that make your life a lot easier as a help desk desktop support person to make your life a lot easier because some of these things, you may stress it out, but I'm going to show you stuff you could do remotely to get in someone's computer without them even knowing or without like doing tips and tricks like, oh, how'd you do that on my computer? Oh my God, you're a lifesaver. You know, there's some things that you could do that you, that people don't know about while doing it remotely if you're help desk level one. So I'm going to show you that real quick. All right. If you're new to my channel, do IT or the desktop support videos, talk about how to get into IT. So as always, rate, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way you know when I go live and I'm going to teach you these crazy tricks. Hopefully you have access to it. If you don't, it's totally fine. All right. Let me share my screen with you. Give me a second. All right. So you remember, I installed um, RSAT tools on uh, Help Desk computer, which is right here on the right-hand side. And then the one on the left-hand side, over here, it's going to be, this is Janet Smith. You see that she has HR drive right over here. I'm logged in as Janet Smith right now. So I'm going to, let me, for the sake of this video, let me sign out. Actually, I'll, I'll even sign in. That's fine. So I'm going to show you something real, real quick. This should, this should be a short video. I'm going to show you tips and tricks that I would do. So if I'm new to IT and she's calling and she says she's having an issue with, with searching, for example, on Windows, on Windows 10 on, on Outlook 2016, I would restart the Windows server feed, Windows search feature. How would you do that remotely? Like, can you get on someone else's computer remotely? Yes, you can. So if the services are enabled, you literally do computer management. You open this up. All right, so when you click on it, see it says here local, right? I'm gonna see, I'm gonna show you something you have never seen before. So what you do is you do, you do connect to another computer. And if you know her computer name, she says her computer name, you may, you may not know what it is, it's desktop one, but you, you may be able to get it because every company has some sort of inventory that tells you what, what computer they're associated with or something like that, they have something that will tell you who, who's associated with that computer or that machine, if that makes sense. So I know it's desktop one, this is desktop two I'm on right now. So I'm gonna do desktop one and hit okay. So now if you look at it, and this is something that you've probably seen or never seen before, now I'm on desktop one. So she's like, I'm having issues with searching. I'm like, okay, can you do me a favor? Yes. Can you, can you um, close out of Outlook and re can you just close out of Outlook? Okay. I'm gonna see if I reset your search functionality. So you go into search and then you, you basically stop it and you start it again. And this is doing it for desktop one. You see it says desktop one up here. So if someone's having an issue with searching, this would, this would be literally the first thing I would do if they're having issues with searching. They have so many services here. So this is like a level one, level two. Like if you know about services and basically, you basically could fix a lot of different things for someone. Another thing is like maybe they're having issues with printing. You may want to reset the, the print services before you do anything else. So there's a print spooner right here. You could stop it. You could stop it. You could start it. Maybe someone needs needs local admin rights temporarily for some reason. I don't know. You don't know. So maybe you want to go into local users and groups, and maybe you want to you want to add someone to admin groups right over here. You could do that. You could add someone to admin groups. That's how, that's you could temporarily give them admin rights remotely. Look at that desktop one remotely, and you can add Janice Smith here as well. So that's something that you might, you may, this might be helpful for you. Maybe you've seen this before, maybe you have not. Um, also, you could literally, um, this is access to not. Some, some companies might have this access to not. Literally, you could, you could do other things. You could check maybe the event viewer, maybe see some, some things that have, maybe the computer crashed recently, and you don't know. And you wanna, you're like, okay, just continue working, uh, Janet. I, I'm gonna go look at the logs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at the logs while you're working. So if you wanna look at the logs, you could do that too. So all of this is part of, computer management, getting into someone else's computer. That's tip number one. I'm giving you a tip. So you can, this is for new people in IT. All right. Yeah, like, Kevin, that's kind of cool, Kevin. I didn't know you could do that. The other tip is if you know the computer name, you could do C dollar sign. So if you do slash slash desktop one and then do C dollar sign, you should be able to get on the computer. This is another trick that people don't know. So you get on her computer, you could go into, so this is very powerful by the way, because you could go into app data on someone else's computer and you could literally delete Microsoft Office if you wanted to, 
or you could delete Outlook if you want. You delete Outlook. I mean, delete Creative Cloud files if you wanted to. You clear up some space on your computer so like they have too much space. You go into the temp folder. You could just start deleting temp folders and stuff like that. So this is another trick. So C daughter sign. If you have the ability to do that remotely, C daughter sign is gonna really help you out. That's tip number two for any anyone that's new to IT. Now, tip number three. If you're new to IT, tip number three, and you're stressing out about a user try registry editor. So what I'll do is I'm going to go into the start menu. I'm going to go into registry editor and I'm going to open that up. Obviously it's on probably for admin rights, but he has admin rights, help desk has admin rights. I'm going to do connect to network computer. That same thing, desktop one, it should let me connect. Now, this is the, this is where it gets interesting for new people in IT. How do you, how do you find out what, what share drive a person has on their computer. So Janice Smith is like, I'll give you an example. Janice Smith is like, this is a computer on the left. Janice was like, I just lost the Z drive. I don't have the Z drive anymore, Kevin. Can you can you remap it for me again? Like I just got rid of it, right? Like, sure, I'll find it for you. And then, you know, if this is an if the if the services are enabled for this, then you could do it. If not, you can't do anything. So, or you could just go into you know Active Directory and see what groups she's part of. You know, you could open up Active Directory and just see what groups she's part of and figure it out that way. So Kevin, I just lost the Z drive. Oh, okay, let me, let me see what I could do for you. So I would literally do registry. I would go into desktop one and you see it's right there. The Z drive is right there. So it, it's not, it's giving me an error because I just closed out of it, but the Z drive is right there. Sometimes what happens is you, you will have issues where um, a, a, a shared drive disappears or something, you know, and then you don't know what to do. So that does happen. Like, it does happen where our users cannot open errors from the key from being open. Detail system cannot. That's fine. Sometimes you have an issue where, where a user cannot, don't know what the Z drive is or never even heard of it. And they don't know how to get it back or don't know what to do. So literally you could do registry, get into it, um, and literally just map it back for them, which is, which is kind of crazy because some people don't know that. So you could, you could literally do that. So I just I just remapped it again, but literally you could do that. You could go into the registry and um, based on the registry, you could literally figure out what shared drives a person has. And this is Microsoft recommended, by the way, this is something that I learned from having job experience. So if you go into network, it's right there. See, I added it back, but that's, that's typically how you would see it. And it would tell you what letter is assigned to them. So this is made to make your life a lot easier for you if you're trying to figure out who has access to what, if that makes sense. So you can literally do this on someone's computer. If, it, if the service is not enabled, then you cannot do this. What service am I talking about? I'm gonna show you right now because I, I don't want you guys trying to do this and you guys like, him hey, that didn't work for me. I'm like, no, you gotta enable certain services for it to work. So what you do is you go into um, services on the user's computer. Obviously you're not gonna be able to do it if, if the, they're not gonna let you do it. Literally what you do is it, most companies have it enabled by default. May, maybe not, maybe, you know, depending on the company. So I'm going to run it as administrator. I'm going to, I'm going to use my admin rights on this one. So I'm going to use my administrator uh, username and password and it have to have remote setting enabled. So what is, what am I talking about? Remote registry. If this is not work, if this is not on, then you cannot get into this. I'm not sure you what happens. Like I'm going to stop it for a second. So let's just, let's just stop it for the sake of this video. And then I'm going to go into registry again. And I'm going to show you what happens when I try to connect to it. It's not going to work now. It shouldn't work. So, well, it's still, wow, oh, it's still working. Hmm, interesting. So what I'm going to do is, actually, I'm going to do disable. And let's see if it works now. Let me close out. Because this was disabled by default, by the way. When I was trying to do it earlier today, it wasn't working for me. So if this is not on, then you definitely cannot do it. You'll get an error message. So let me see. Oh, it says it's running. That's why. Let me stop it. That's why it's not working. All right. So this was disabled and stopped when I did it before. So let's see. Let me close out of this again. It shouldn't work. It should give you an, a weird error message, something about enabling remote, whatever, whatever. Just see. There we go. Unable to connect to desktop one. Make sure the network computer has remote administrator enabled. You know, and I was looking this up online. I'm like, what the heck is this? And I'm like, no, you got to enable remote registry and services. Oh, okay. That makes sense now. So as soon as you go back into here, uh, you hit apply, you hit start, uh, you hit okay, and you close out of it. So this is something that needs to be enabled. Otherwise, it's not going to work. 
just teaching you something new. You probably have never seen this before. Maybe you have. I don't know. Every company is different. Maybe you, you have seen this before. So um, I would just go back into desktop one and it should, should let me in. There we go. So you go literally go into one of these folders. So there's going to be a bunch of different folders, obviously. Just be careful with this. Um, you go to the network one and it tells you what the, what the letter is of that folder of that computer. So that's it. That's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to show you. So you have, now you have three things. You have computer management. You get into services and other stuff. You have, um, let me get out of my screen share. So you have computer management, which is kind of cool. You never, you probably never even heard of that. You're like, wait a minute, Kevin, I didn't know you could do that. I'm like, yes, you can. So you have computer management, you have registry and you have the C drive, the C dollar sign. So use those three things as tools. If you don't have certain rights for certain things, or you can't do certain things, try, give that a try in your job. If you're new to IT, just be careful with stuff. Make sure you get, make sure you get approval or permission before you do these things. Um, I don't take responsibility if you break something by accident. Just, just be careful what you do. If you know what you're doing, then touch it. If you don't, don't, don't touch it. But there's tips and tricks for new people and help desk IT support entry level. I hope this video helps you out. And I hope this does help you out in some shape or form if you're new to IT. Anyway, with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day. As always, rate, comment, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. And I hope you have a great Sunday. All right. Take care. Peace. Later.